Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. Second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike. And the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet, and cast him into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. This is great. Sunday Mass at St. Bernard's here in Crawfordsville. We got the knights, we got the incense, we have people in every nook and cranny of our church here. This is exactly how Mass should be. And in today's readings, we hear a little bit about the Mass. That's what we want to talk about today, our, our gospel passage. Jesus makes a parable of the kingdom of God and he compares it to a wedding feast that a king wanted to host for his son. Now, parables tend to represent something. So who do you think the king is who wants to hold a feast for his son? God. God the Father. Very good. And who is God's son? Jesus. Excellent. Yes. So the gospel passage, we hear about this wedding feast or this wedding banquet. And likewise, in the first reading, we heard about another feast, a banquet from the prophet Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah foretold that one day when the Messiah, when the Savior would come, that there would be a great feast on Mount Zion. Mount Zion. Mount Zion is the mountain in Jerusalem where the temple stood. Also in sacred scripture, Mount Zion represents the heavenly mountain where God dwells. In the Old Testament, when the Jews went to the temple in Jerusalem, they didn't just think they were going to the temple. They also believed they were being taken up into heaven. In a certain sense, Mount Zion was both Jerusalem and heaven. So we have these readings about the wedding feast on Mount Zion. And when I heard these readings, I was reminded of something that happened to me a few years ago while I was still in seminary. My dad introduced me to a man who uh, he liked to ride motorcycles with. So I, my, my dad likes to ride motorcycles. And I tried once upon a time and just couldn't quite get a hang of it. I don't know if there's any other motorcyclists in here, but anyway, I didn't want to spend the last years of my life in seminary. I was afraid of getting in an accident. But I was meeting with one of my dad's friends who happened to be raised Catholic. And in his adulthood, he left the Catholic Church and he became a very devout, Bible-believing evangelical. I'm sure uh, many of you have had uh, someone you know who has done the same thing. And I remember uh, he wanted to meet with me. He knew that I was studying to be a priest, and so we got coffee together. And, you know, I was kind of excited. You know, here I am, been at seminary a long time. I'm going to convert this guy, bring him back into the church, right? And we got coffee, and he said something that totally stumped me. He said, he said when I read the Bible, and especially when I read the New Testament, when I read the life of Jesus... I don't see the mass. He said, where are the vestments? Where are the chalices? Where's the incense? When I read about the life of Jesus, I don't see any of those things. What's the deal with all of that Catholic stuff? 
And I remember talking to him, and I really was stumped. I thought, wow, I never really asked myself that question. When you read the life of Jesus, you hear a lot about his teachings and his preachings, but you don't see the Mass necessarily, or at least it's not very obvious. And I was stumped, and it kind of shook me. For a few months, I thought about this question, where do we as Catholics get off with all of our Massy stuff? At the same time, I was beginning to finish up my seminary studies, and I had to choose a topic to write on for my final thesis paper, and I chose, of all books, I chose to write on the book of Revelation, the book of the Apocalypse, the last book, the Bible. And again, me being prideful, I thought, you know, I've been in seminary a long time, I know a lot about the Bible, it's going to be a piece of cake. And I sat down and I read it through one afternoon, and I was totally lost reading the book of Revelation. Has anybody here ever read the book of Revelation before? Show of hands, All right, a few people. How many of you feel like you understood it really well? Probably very few, right? It's a very confusing and perplexing book of the Bible. And so I wanted to write my final paper on it, and I was kind of lost. And I rediscovered some talks from a man who wrote a great book about the book of Revelation. A man who at one point in his life was a very devout evangelical, raised evangelical, and he became a very uh, very well-known scripture scholar in his church. He went to the greatest uh, Protestant seminary for scripture in the U.S., and he graduated at the top of his class. And one of the things he was fascinated by was the book of Revelation. And he began to study it for many years, and he began to discover that what many people think of the book of Revelation is different than what the book of Revelation is actually about. A lot of us think the book of Revelation is all about the second coming of Jesus and the judgments at the end of time and the mark of the beast and the Antichrist. And what this man discovered as he studied the book of Revelation is that the book of Revelation speaks a little bit about the end of the world, but the word Antichrist doesn't come up anywhere. Either does the second coming. Many of the things we think the book of Revelation is about, it's actually not really about. And he was puzzled by this. And he struggled to understand the book of Revelation until one day, as he was in his graduate studies for theology, he was getting a doctorate, and he decided on a whim to attend a Catholic Mass. And he attended a daily Catholic Mass. And what he saw when he attended Mass is he heard Catholics singing the Holy, Holy, Holy he heard Catholics speaking about the Lamb of God, right? Every Mass, we say Lamb of God four different times. He saw vestments. He saw an altar. He witnessed incense. And what he discovered is that when he went to the Catholic Mass, he wasn't sure if he was at Mass or if he was in the book of Revelation. Interesting. If any of you have read the book of Revelation, you know that it does speak about judgments, but also on every chapter, there is an allusion to a heavenly liturgy. You see angels wearing vestments, swinging incense. You see an altar. Uh, even the first half of the book, it's all about a scroll. In Greek, the word biblion, where we get the word Bible, right? The whole first half of the book is about this liturgy of the word, you might say. And the word of the scriptures is only unlocked by the Lamb, which we receive in the liturgy of the Eucharist. In the book of Revelation, the angels are around the throne of God and they're singing holy, 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 just like we do at every single Mass. We sing the holy, holy, holy around the altar of God. At the end of the book of Revelation, the great revealing is that heaven, the heavenly Jerusalem, actually comes down from heaven and comes down to earth. And there is a wedding feast of the Lamb. What this man discovered is that the book of Revelation, the reason why he didn't understand it, is because the hidden key is the Mass. You ever understood that? When we go to Mass, we are literally taken up into heaven, into a heavenly liturgy, where all of the angels and saints are around the throne of God, worshiping and singing hymns of praise. It's exactly what happens when we come to Mass. It's amazing. We're surrounded by the angels and saints. That's the reason why at Mass, after we sing the Holy, 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 we all kneel down 
we recognize that heaven has now come to earth. Heaven and earth have met, and we're surrounded by angels and saints, even if we can't see them. On our altar is the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ Himself, even though it appears to simply be a piece of bread. It's amazing. You know, as a priest, sometimes people will tell me amazing stories, and they're things that don't happen to me, but I've met certain people who can see angels, and they can see demons. They have an ability to see the spiritual realm around us, and they've shared with me how when they come to Mass, they literally see angels surrounding the altar. God only gives that gift to certain people, but if we had that gift, we would all see it. That every single Mass, truly, the God of the universe is on the altar and the angels surround us. And the incense that we, that we incense the Eucharist with represents the prayers of all of us, the prayers of all the saints lifting up to the throne of God for Him. Now when I began to understand this, not only did I think it was unbelievable and amazing, it reminded me of that conversation I had with my father's friend about chalices, investments, where does it all come from? Well, he forgot the most important book of the New Testament, the book that ends it all, the book that is like the bookmark, bookmark on all of salvation history, is the book of Revelation, which talks about the heavenly liturgy, which every Catholic is taken up into every time we have Mass. Brothers and sisters, this feast that is spoken of in the prophet Isaiah and in the gospel parable, it is nothing other than what we're doing here today, the Mass. What if I told you that the Mass was the point of all of salvation history, that everything in the Bible leads up to the Mass, what we are doing here today? It's remarkable. So many Christians... They don't see this, and in a certain sense, they're missing the culmination of it all. They don't have a liturgy. They don't have a priesthood. They don't have the Eucharist. They don't have the Mass. Likewise, many for us as Catholics, many of us, just as the invitees in the Gospel parable today, many of us don't accept the invitation. A majority of Catholics don't attend Mass on a regular basis. Statistics say that about 70% of Catholics don't ever come to Mass except for maybe once or twice a year. They are like the people in the Gospel parable who are invited to the great wedding supper, the wedding feast, and they don't come. They find something more important. It's a great examination of conscience for us always. Do we let anything get in between us in the Mass. We should be weary and careful. Another striking aspect of the Gospel parable today, it says that when the king came in to meet the guests who attended, there was one man there who angered him. Remember why he was angered? He came without a wedding garment. He didn't come dressed for the occasion. Maybe some of you have that experience of attending an event and realizing that you're outdressed by everyone else there. It's a little bit embarrassing. According to the Gospel parable today, there was a man who came to the wedding feast who wasn't properly prepared, wasn't properly dressed. And I wonder if that's something practical we can take away from this parable. How do we prepare ourselves for the Mass? Do we dress for it? I'm not judging anyone, all right? When I, before I became a priest, I didn't wear a suit and tie to Mass or anything like that. But I tell you, when I see people coming to Mass dressed to the nines, I love it. That's how it should be. The Mass is the greatest thing we do in our entire week, in our entire lives. And we should reflect that in how we're dressed. We should reflect that in what time we show up to Mass. Instead of coming at the last moment, we should come early preparing ourselves for this great event that we are about to participate in. What about spiritually? Are we spiritually prepared for the Mass? 
Sometimes when people come to the Mass for the first time, especially people who aren't Catholic, they're a little bit offended at the climax of the Mass when we have sacred communion and we don't invite them to come forward. And they think we're excluding them or being judgmental. Not so at all. We as Catholics believe that every person coming forth for the Eucharist must be prepared. It means they must believe what we believe. When we receive communion, it's a sign that we truly believe what the Eucharist is. And so someone who's not Catholic, they don't share that belief. So they cannot participate in that feast. And not just, Catholic, and not just non-Catholics, even sometimes many Catholics. We must be spiritually prepared. We cannot receive communion in a state of mortal sin. We cannot just come to Mass whenever we feel like it and then expect to come and receive the Eucharist, for example. Sometimes people who are living in irregular marriages, they have that same experience. We're not allowed to receive communion if we're living in a state of perpetual sin, just like an irregular marriage. Of course, everyone is welcome to come to the Mass. Everyone is welcome to pray. No one is abandoned by the Lord. But in order to receive communion, we must be truly prepared. And so yes, for all of us here as Catholics, even those of us here who attend Mass every Sunday, are you prepared to receive communion? Have you been to confession in the last year? Do you have some mortal sin that you're holding on your soul and yet still presenting yourself for communion? All of us should be going to confession before we do those things. Friends, the Mass is so unbelievable. It's so amazing. It's so beautiful. It's the culmination of all of salvation history. And I hope that today we might be reminded and inspired to learn from those guests who didn't come to the feast or learn from that guest who wasn't spiritually prepared and that we might actually prepare ourselves unlike those unworthy invitees.